my warmest greetings to all the YouTube fans on this planet and on extraterrestrial satellites copying our broadcasts and sending them to other solar systems. This is Attila Eshelada presenting on behalf of the Real Turkey channel and today we're going to talk about something that's very popular in Turkey but that's not necessarily limited to Turkey which is crypto assets. Once again your comments guide me and inspire me. A few people asked about crypto money. Actually, it's crypto assets as far as I'm concerned, and digital money is different too. And I decided to do a broadcast. Turkey is just such an enthusiast of uh, crypto monies that soon our regulatory boards uh, may forbid them <laughs> because people are speculating too much. You may ask, what the hell do you know about crypto monies? Nothing. I think uh, I understand there's something called Bitcoin, Ethereum, and there are thousands of them like Dogecoin. I've never invested or traded in a cryptocurrency, but none of these is necessary. Because I'm going to look at the future of the cryptocurrencies from the perspective of monetary theory and the theory of financial crises on which, yes, I am a certified expert. In fact, I did my PhD, didn't complete it, but on Hyman Minsky's financial instability hypotheses. And I've been doing financial assets for 30 years. All financial assets from their creation to their maturation go through several stages. And I don't think crypto monies will be any different. So we can deduce some general rules and decide whether there's a future for crypto monies or crypto assets and what kind of future that is. Well, here we go. Real Turkey Channel talking about crypto assets. Why do we use money? <laughs> because we like it. Everybody likes to have money. We use money uh, because it's better than physical exchange. Suppose um, I'm a shoemaker, a cobbler, and I need a suit. If there wasn't money, I would take my shoes, go to a tailor and say, look, I need a new suit or a new sweater. And here I have manufactured fine shoes. Uh, would you like to exchange them? Then I would do the same thing with bread maker, with butcher, etc., etc. You know where this is going. This is extremely tedious and time-consuming. Money minimizes price discovery function and trading time. It's a great convenience. So the first and most important function of money is acceptance by most of the sellers and buyers of goods and services as a means of payment. This is why we use the dollars, the euros, the yens, the, the sterling, pound sterling and Swiss franc because they are accepted everywhere on this planet. Even if you go to the jungles of the Amazon or to the wild forests of Africa, probably some natives will take dollars. Okay, I'm exaggerating. But it must have wide acceptance. For it to have wide acceptance, there are two rules. First, it must be very difficult to, to um, forge, to falsify. Uh, two, it must be backed by a central bank or by some kind of value or authority. But that's not the only function of money. Money is also a store of value. Some of us don't trust banks and like to keep our cash. In Turkey, for instance, uh, there is even an expression for it, under the mattress. So where is your money? Oh, it's under the mattress. I don't trust these banks. Under the mattress means I keep my money in a safe or vault at home and possibly in dollar or euro, euro form as, as, a, as a means of saving. And actually, all monies have that function. But when it comes to cryptocurrencies, we encounter problems in, ter in terms of these two functions. First of all, 
most people who deal in cryptocurrencies treat them as assets, as stores of value rather than means of exchange. And therefore, their price volatility is similar to risky assets rather than to dollar or euro. Look at the dollar euro exchange rate. Obviously, I'm old and my memory is not very good, but I think over the last two, three years, the euro dollar exchange rate has varied anywhere between 115 to 125, something like that. Relative narrow range. The only crypto money I know is Bitcoin. And I think it has gone from 19,000 19, to 4,000, then to 12,000, then to 45,000, 60,000. You know what I'm you know what I'm saying? It's sort of like a, a small cap stock. It varies too much. Now imagine a situation where you go to the market, where you buy your daily bread and milk. Milk, you know, two dollars per gallon. Next day you go to the market, and milk suddenly is eight dollars per gallon. Not because milk has become more expensive, but because the value of the crypto money has changed. Would you like a currency like that? Of course not. You want certainty that, well, obviously prices will change over time, but they won't change all the time. Otherwise, the money would not uh, would lose its main function of uh, and the limiting price discovery. You will have to discover price every time you go to the store. Most of the currencies, cryptocurrencies, or all of them that we have at this point suffer from this weakness. Since they are mostly seen as assets, their volatility is too high to be used as a means of payment. And more importantly, they are not widely acceptable. If I have a Visa or MasterCard or American dollars or euros, I can pretty much go anywhere in the world, just pull out my credit card and it would be acceptable. Or if I give dollars, even in the wild forests of Hungary, I don't know if Hungary is wild forest. Some people will take it. This is not the case with crypto monies, but it's changing. And I assure you, more and more stores and financial institutions will take crypto monies because the future does belong to crypto monies. There is no doubt about it. Just like uh, seashells were replaced by first silver and gold, then banknotes, and then digital money, which is credit cards. All of these shall be replaced by cryptocurrencies because it provides certain advantages, such as you really can't falsify the records. I mean, this blockchain technology is fantastic. Uh, and a few days ago, I was watching one of the American channels. I honestly don't remember which one it is. Apparently, in some states, um, ATMs, money machines, now do accept uh, Bitcoin or some crypto monies. And there are even gas stations which would allow you to use Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, I'm sorry, uh, to buy gas, which is a great convenience. And if we have thousands of stores and gas stations and convenience stores and medical clinics and movie theaters like that, well, then that means crypto monies have arrived. There is one major obstacle to that, which is that crypto monies are a private enterprise. And if you have noticed, all major money or currencies are under the control of a monetary authority. This is for two reasons. The first reason is that the monetary authority guarantees and stabilizes the value of that particular currency. Who doesn't trust Fed? Who doesn't trust People's Bank of China? Everybody. You know that that banknote is backed by a central bank and that gives you confidence to keep it and to use it. <laughs> the second reason why some monetary authority always supervises a currency is money laundering or use of monies in terror financing and of course in drug uh, you know sales and in prostitution or other uh, illegitimate purposes i'm not saying people who transact in cryptocurrencies have such intentions but 
you know, for a Colombian drug cartel, if they can get into the, you know, cryptocurrency, uh, hey, I mean, nobody can trace them and they can ship billions of dollars worth of money across the world instead of using uh, containers. This is why either there will be one or few cryptocurrencies which will be issued by central banks or which would have the supervision of a monetary authority. Otherwise, central banks will never allow them to become widely spread means of payment. And that's important if you are choosing a cryptocurrency. For instance, China is inventing its own digital money. This is digital money, by the way. It's not a cryptocurrency because it doesn't have the asset quality in it. It's just a means of exchange. But that's where the future is. There is another thing here. And that's where history of financial assets or financial history comes into play. Every financial innovation, in fact, every real innovation has eventually led to financial crises. You want examples? Dot-com bubble. Do you remember dot-com bubble in 2000? People, investors have intuitively sensed that there is something there. There is value. Internet is the way to go. But they didn't know which internet companies would succeed. So they invested in all of them. Too much money or wealth suddenly flew into the dot-com space. And at the end, people realized they are paying too dear of a price. And then they all pulled their money out. And with the financial crisis, I assure you, the same thing will happen in crypto monies as well. Now, you might ask me, well, you know, price goes from 60,000, 12,000. Is that a crisis? No. The definition of a financial crisis entails, uh, as, as Jay Powell said, abnormal uh, trading or cessation of trading, the evaporation of liquidity in that market. Moreover, for it to mutate into a crisis, there must be a situation or threat that pulls in the financial institutions that either intermediate it or that offer it as an asset in their funds. And we're slowly inching up to that situation. I don't want to name names because I will be demonetized probably. You see global investment banks both offering their wealthy clients crypto money services, advice as well as intermediation. And some uh, asset management companies buying these and offering it to their clients. Eventually, there will be a situation where one or several of these cryptocurrencies would go down significantly in value. Trading will cease and some of these financial institutions will face the threat of insolvency. Now, remember, now we call uh the 2008 2009 global financial crisis mortgage crisis uh but actually it started with the insolvency of lehman brothers and in the first few years it was called the lehman brothers crisis because lehman brothers was the most fragile among world investment banks and it was the first to fail it was highly leveraged this is where we will see uh, the next event in the development or evolution of cryptocurrencies. When will that happen? I can't give a date, but I can give you a figure. Let's say 100 to 1,000 funds have started investing into cryptocurrencies. 10, 15 major global banks and investment banks are now offering trading services. And the uh, Wealth invested into cryptocurrencies reaches somewhere between $5 trillion to $10 trillion. That's when I would be extremely mindful of a cryptocurrency crisis. Okay, uh, but that won't be the end of the cryptocurrencies. The weak players, those who have taken undue risk, those who have been careless with counterparty risks, will be eliminated. And 
some of the cryptocurrencies will survive and prosper. And that's the final thing I want to say about cryptocurrencies. I am most familiar with the monetary history of the United States. I think before the Civil War, every state and most major banks in each state have their own banknotes. And just like today's Wall Street, there was a stock exchange or a money exchange where they traded at different discount and premiums to face value. Depending on the accessibility of that bank, the ease of collecting data on that bank, its credibility, the state finances, etc., etc. That was very inconvenient because the discount rates could change overnight. As a result, not necessarily because of federal pressure, but because of market pressure or because of evolutionary pressure, the strongest survive principle, most of these banknotes were eliminated and finally Fed was founded to issue one banknote that's valid currency everywhere in the 50 states of the United States and most of the world. And that's the final stage of evolution for cryptocurrencies. There are just way too many of them. Some of them will become crypto assets since they back a real asset or innovation or some kind of spec type of activity. But they won't have the function of as a means of payment. And four or five at most cryptocurrencies will dominate dollars and will become means of payment for the rest of the world. If you are investing into these babies, your job is to pick which one is going to survive, which one is going to win the war of evolution. Thank you very much for watching another broadcast of Real Turk channel. This is your presenter, Atilla Yeshalada. If you like, please share and please do comment. I love your comments. I wish all of you a healthy weekend. Atilla Yeshalada saying goodbye from Istanbul.